G'day guys and gal, the Emperor isn't in a very talkative mood these days. Getting betrayed by your favourite son and then turned into an eternally suffering, unliving yet undying lithium battery that humanity relies on can have that effect on people. But that doesn't mean he has never spoken or communicated with his servants. In rare occasion, the Emperor is able to somewhat pull his shattered consciousness together for long enough to impart information to his chosen ones, giving them the direction they need to save mankind. This ranges from receiving a sense of destiny all the way to the Emperor literally just chatting with you. Regardless of how he does it, each and every time the Emperor has communicated with someone, it's created some incredible lore, and that is worth talking about. But before we get started, this is the last video I'm making this year, and what a year it has been. We hit our goal of 420,000 subscribers, which, as I promised, I'll now proceed to hire the most attractive model possible, slap her in a 40k cosplay, and take some, uh, very good photos of them that I'll share to you guys and gal for free. On top of that, what better way to end the year than by launching one final major mini, the Space Elf Demon Hunter. If he looks familiar, then yeah, he should. I can't say for why for legal reasons, but I've more or less combined everyone's favorite demon hunter with a dark space elf to create a pretty awesome model in my opinion. Comes with two head variants as well as the option to have those signature demon wings or not. So you can either have a full send demon hunter or a more classic demon hunter. This is the most detailed major mini to date and I'm just obsessed with it. Would make a great dark elder archon proxy. Or you know, just have it as a great model to paint in general and it could probably work with D&D campaigns as well. I think, I never really got into D&D. Also, the painting competition has entered its final month, so if you're one of the people who has a model sitting there, paint it and send a photo. I would actually be so moist to see a proper painter submit a demon hunter model into the comp. There is still time. Just remember to take a good flick. A good model can look trash with a poor photo, and a mid paint job can look great with a good photo. Today we'll go over each of the times the Emperor has unshut the bed and reached out to his followers, as well as what he said and what impact that had. Uh, let's get into it. Before we get into the examples, let's quickly discuss why it's so rare and significant that the Emperor speaks. After all, he is alive enough to keep the Astronomicon alight and forces of hell at bay. Surely a quick bit of chit chat wouldn't be that hard. Yeah, no, it's super hard. See, when he was mortally wounded by Horus and placed into the Golden Throne, his psyche was shattered as he now puts his entire focus and purpose into the Astronomicon and keeping the webway on Terra shut. If the Astronomicon fails, mankind dies. If the webway portal on Terra is opened, demons bum rush every everything, kill the Emperor and the Astronomicon, so everyone dies. He is so engrossed with this overwhelmingly difficult task that he has ascended beyond the mortal realm. Now a Leviathan in the warp, but a husk in real space. The amount of effort it requires for him to be able to pull his scattered, vast soul together to be able to actually communicate with a mortal is so difficult and taxing that he only does it when it is completely necessary. With that established, let's have a gaze at the times the biggie blew off his lid and opened up his tinder. One of the first times he directly spoke to someone since his, uh, uh, ascension is when his Imperium was up in flames during the Age of Apostasy. A dickhead named Georges Vandyer, who has arguably the most dickhead name possible, had risen to power through political manipulation and a lot of murder. He had become the Lord of the Imperium, went insane off his power, and then went on to create then manipulate the Sisters of Battle into becoming his bodyguard slash sex toys. Whenever they were like, do I have to suck you off Georges? Your dick cheese is gross! He would be like, yes, it is the will of the Emperor. Now, something cool about the Age of Apostasy is that it had nothing to do with chaos. The trade allegiance were still licking their wounds from the heresy. It was just mankind being really stupid and shit. Neither the Emperor nor the Custodes interfered with Georges' reign of blood, as it was called, because it wasn't driven by chaos and it didn't particularly threaten the Emperor. So it was up to a few pious men and a bunch of space marines to try fix the job. They sieged Georges and his palace. However, the Bolter bitches proved to be legendary warriors and keep the space marines at bay. However, at this point, things had gotten so bad that the Imperium threatened to shatter. As such, the Emperor went, okay, enough of this bullshit, and sent his custodies to retrieve the leader of the nuns with guns to have an audience with the Emperor. It's not known what was said, however, when Alicia came out of her meeting with the Emperor, her hair had turned white from the Emperor's psychic cum blast before she then declared Georges a heretic and killed him, ending the Age of Apostasy and allowing the Imperium to heal. Fun fact, the classic sisters of battle that dye their hair white do it as a tribute to Alicia's white hair that was gained from her conversation with the Emperor. It's 
unlikely the conversation was verbal, more so the emperor projecting his will into her and the psychic backlash bleaching her hair. I don't know if this next one counts or is even still canon, but the Imperium's astropaths are all soul bound to the emperor. This basically involves them getting close to the emperor and guzzling his spirit semen. This process often blinds them due to the godlike ejaculate hitting them in the eyes at Mark 10. So whilst they don't have a conversation with the Big E per se, they definitely are exposed to his might and form a pretty solid bond with him. A lot of people wonder how the custodies know the Emperor's will or speak with his voice. After all, only a handful of modern day custodies ever met the Emperor while he was still flesh and blood. How are they supposed to know what he desires? Well, it's because the Emperor does actually speak to them. Kind of. The Emperor doesn't have the ability to be constantly talking to his custodies, so instead he is able to leak his will into certain custodies' dreams. These custodies then meet together to discuss their dreams and interpret the Emperor's will. There is an entire shield host full of these custodies called the Emissaries Imperialis. It was these emissaries that convinced the rest of the custodies that serving the newly reborn Gilliman was the Emperor's will. In a bit of funny lore, one emissary was upset as he hadn't gotten a dream from the Emperor for a while and he was worried that the Big E was pissed at them. This method of communication takes longer, isn't very reliable, and requires a lot of translation. But it's also a lot easier for the Emperor to do without having to pull his shit together. The first genuine conversation the Emperor attempted to have with words didn't go super well, and it was a very jarring experience. Inquisitor Jack Draco was able to speak with the Emperor, but it was a challenge as he was talking to a couple of shattered fragments of the Emperor's psyche. Each of those fragments was almost like a different entity, and they said conflicting things to him, almost like the Emperor was arguing with himself in his effort to try and help the Inquisitor. Although the law surrounding Inquisitor Draco is considered by many to be pretty mid, I do think a shattered Emperor doing his best but still struggling is a pretty good representation. Speaking of Inquisitors, there was also Inquisitor Hector Rex, the hero of the Siege of Rax. He held the title Auditori Imperata, which basically means he was one of the few people to ever get an in-person audience with the Emperor. I can't find any lore about what was said, but considering how much of a gigachad Rex ended up being, I can imagine there were a few words passed between them. There was a fun little short story about the time that the Emperor directly intervened in a space battle to ensure the victory of the Imperial forces. Basically, the Imperial fleet was engaging Nurgleite ships in space. It was a key battle that would have far-reaching effects. The Nurgleite ships were able to smuggle a specialized, highly intelligent demon onto the Imperial capital ship. The Nurgleite's demon's purpose was to infiltrate the engine room, sabotage it, and more or less blow up the Imperial ship, winning the battle for the Nurgleite forces. The Emperor saw this, and through what can only imagine would be a titanic effort, was able to imbue a lowly ship crewman with his will, giving him the divine power to intercept this demon, score a mutual kill on it, and save the Imperial fleet and likely trillions of lives. Just a cool example of the Emperor nudging the Imperium to victory. However, sometimes his nudging is a bit more uh, loud and blatant, like a shove. In the Horusian Wars book, one of the heroes is fighting chaos, then he gets a vision from the Emperor. The vision makes him go Super Saiyan, igniting him with holy fire and instantly purging all the heretics and demons around him just from the power-up. This power-up killed some pretty spicy bad guys, so it is definitely within the Emperor's ability to occasionally bust a nut and carry the team. The opening of the Great Rift might have seemed like a massive L for the Imperium, and to be fair it was. Demon incursions everywhere, half the Imperium losing access to the Astronomicon, thousands of Imperial worlds being devoured by warp storms, and so on and so forth. However, one unexpected boon was that because it flooded the galaxy with raw warp energy, the Emperor had been greatly empowered, and now finds it significantly easier to communicate and intervene in shit. The first example of this is when Gilliman returns to Terra. He is able to have a full-blown convo with the Big E, and even though G-Man describes his father as a godlike star, they were able to trade words. Unfortunately, we don't get to see the actual conversation, but it definitely wasn't just G-Man talking to himself in front of the Emperor. They went back and forth, with Gilliman realizing that the Emperor never saw the Primarchs as sons or held love for them. Instead, they were just useful tools, living weapons for his conquest. As this conversation took place after the opening of the Great Rift, it's probably the biggest conversation the Emperor has ever had in his undead state. Taking this a step further, the Emperor used literal divine intervention to save Gilliman when he was mortally wounded by Mortarion, undoing a super virus and then cum blasting Nurgle's garden with a torrent of holy fire, scarring Nurgle himself. The Emperor also spoke through Gilliman. At first, it was in his shattered, conflicting aspect. However, using will and the raw warp energy flooding the galaxy, the Emperor was able to pull his consciousness together for the first time in thousands of years and actually say what he wanted to say. And what he wanted to say was to call Mortarion a little bitch. I'm not even joking. This demonstration of power is hopefully the prelude to a more active and more importantly, a chattier Emperor. 
If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then pick up the Space Elf Demon Hunter. Honestly, my favorite model so far, and I'm so keen to see how you guys and gal paint him. Hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button for more chatty content. Join the school for more memes, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.